So I'm sure like many of you out there, you spent your May 4th watching the brand new series, Tales of the Empire. And I was a big fan of Tales of the Jedi, so I had really high hopes going into this. We're gonna go through the episodes, I'm gonna give my thoughts on everything that goes down and how I feel about this series overall. But with that being said, we're on the road to 1500 subs, we're now at 1400, we're getting so close, so if you're new to this channel and you love talking about everything Marvel, Star Wars, pop culture, hit that button, like the video, comment down below because I read every single one and I most likely will respond. And now, let's get into this video. So the first three episodes of Tales of the Empire really goes back to the story of Morgan Elsbeth. We didn't know too much about her. I mean, we really only saw her in The Mandalorian Season 2 and The Ahsoka Show. And these first three episodes really flesh out her backstory in a really cool way. The first episode, we see General Grievous and his droid army wipe out Dathomir. It was crazy seeing this many Night Sisters because we all know the Night Sisters as this ancient group of people who we don't often see many of, but we get our first big look at a group here and they're fighting the droids. I think the return of Grievous is so great because he looks menacing and acts menacing in this. The original Tartovsky Clone Wars depicts General Grievous as this monster. He's terrifying to be in the presence of, and I think this episode where we get to see General Grievous in the Clone Wars animated style really sells us on that aspect of him. He's kind of the butt of every joke in terms of villains when it comes to animated Star Wars, but getting to see him in this form being evil is awesome. And we see the person that Morgan Elsbeth eventually becomes is really rooted in what happens to her here. And the next episode, we have a little bit of a time jump, and I really enjoy the time jumps throughout these episodes because we get before the Empire, during the Empire, and after the Empire. In the second episode, we actually see a young version of Grand Admiral Thrawn, and man, he looks great in the Clone Wars style. I love how Thrawn, even back then when he was super young, before he was Grand Admiral, is planting the seeds for the future. He is teaming up with Morgan Elsbeth way before the Empire even falls, therefore setting up his reign later on. And while Morgan Elsbeth is definitely not a good person for what she does to these local people, people that are basically working as slaves for the Empire, you see that her past kind of leads her down this path. And with the title of these first three episodes being a reference to the quote Yoda says, Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. I think this reflects Morgan Elsbeth's character very well and really enriches her character. Obviously, we already know her fate. We know what happens to her in the Ahsoka show, but filling out this backstory kind of feels purposeful, reminding us that these mythological stories, these tales are important and they teach valuable lessons. And I'm gonna hold back on that point just a little bit until we talk about the last three episodes because overall, this series just does something. And I'm not gonna get into what it does just yet. The latter three episodes focus on a character us Clone Wars fans have wanted to see the return of for years. We follow former Jedi and convict Barriss Afi after the fall of the Jedi Temple. If we remember back to the Clone Wars, Barriss Afi is the one who caused Ahsoka to leave the Jedi Order, framing her for crimes that eventually just lead to everything else that happens in the Clone Wars. So Barriss, in hindsight, is a very important character, but we haven't seen anything from her in years. Nothing since that original Clone Wars arc. Barriss returns here, and we actually see the Jedi Temple fall with her in the prison cell, and she gets recruited by the Inquisitors. More importantly, the Fourth Sister. And the Fourth Sister is a character that we actually saw in the Obi-Wan Kenobi show, but we actually see in Rebels as well. And I love the depth that we get to her character, because she is evil. At least for the first two episodes, you really see how the dark side has a hold on all of these Inquisitors. She doesn't know if what she's doing is the right thing. She made mistakes in the past, and I think she knows that. So while she's going through these trials with the Inquisitors, having to fight fellow Jedi in order to take their place as an Inquisitor, there must be so many different things going through her head at this moment, such as, what if I never left the Jedi Order? What if I didn't betray them? Would I be dead now? Would I have been able to save more Jedi? But as she gets recruited by the Inquisitors, we see Darth Vader as as well as Merok and the Inquisitor that Ahsoka kills in the original Tales of the Jedi series. It's just really cool because most of the characters in this room have interactions with Ahsoka. And I have to stop and take a moment because the animation and the quality of this animation, especially in this episode, is unbelievable. Darth Vader's helmet looks real. It doesn't look animated at all. And I thought they were gonna maybe throw a spin on things and have Barriss be the one who knew Anakin was Darth Vader, therefore telling Reva, and that's how she knows in the Kenobi show. But they didn't go this route. However, the they do go down I think is very impactful. We have Barriss and the fourth sister going to planets hunting for Jedi and Barriss is just not going with it. She's trying to be the light in the darkness. The fourth sister completely wipes out an entire town and this
this was brutal to watch. They're searching for this Jedi, and when they find him, Barriss actually turns on the fourth sister, going from the dark side to now the light. In the final episode, we jump forward several years after Barriss turned against the Inquisitors, and the fourth sister is still looking for her. Only now, Barriss seems to be maybe working with The Path, which is the organization of remaining Jedi helping Force-sensitive people escape the Empire. So maybe she's working with them, but she's definitely helping people and Force-sensitive people find safe passage. She also gives a very slight nod to Ahsoka, meaning they probably met up in the prior years and made up for what happened, which makes me very happy. One of the best set pieces from this entire series happens in this final episode where we have this giant ice cave where Barriss kind of traps the fourth sister in her own mind game. I love this because she's getting the fourth sister to actually question why she's following all of these random orders, making the fourth sister realize that she's not following these orders because she believes them or has faith in the Empire, but because she's scared of standing up to them. After that, the fourth sister actually finds and stabs Barris, but doesn't really mean to. Barris has turned this very unforgivable Inquisitor back to the light side and has brought hope to her. And similar to what Barris does to save the Jedi in the previous episode, the fourth sister actually does the same for Barris and saves her. And that's where this episode ends. Every episode is about 15 minutes or so long, and it just leaves you wanting more. The characters that we're dealing with here are not main characters from Star Wars. And by main characters, I mean very popular Jedi, Han Solo, Luke Skywalker, no one really in the Skywalker mix. We've got Morgan Elsbeth, a character who just recently popped up in Star Wars, as well as Barriss Offee, a character from the Clone Wars that we never got closure on. But they take these two characters that you're vaguely familiar with and tell very impactful and meaningful mythological stories. Just life lessons, things you read about in mythological tales. And I think that's the purpose of Tales of the Empire and Tales of the Jedi. It's to go back to what made the Clone Wars so great, with older episodes starting off with lines of dialogue and opening messages that leave a sense of hope or teach a lesson. My only problem with it, I want more. Six episodes is just not enough for me. I was talking with a friend very briefly about this, and we said if we could get about 30 plus seasons of this, just filling out the lore of all of these obscure characters that we all love, it would be great. I would watch a Tales of the Bounty Hunter series, a Tales of the Sith series, a Tales of the Mandalorian series. Just give me these characters that we've had brief interactions with and fill out their stories and teach us lessons along with it. Do I think Tales of the Jedi was maybe a little bit better because we had focus on characters like Ahsoka? Sure. But I see Tales of the Empire and I can't help but think, what if we get more of this? Because it's really good. Most importantly, I need to know what you guys think about this show down below, so leave a comment. I read every single one. Again, I most likely will respond. Like the video, subscribe to the channel to get us to 1,500 subs. Can't even believe I'm saying that. And I will see you all very, very soon.